Almighty God, graciously behold us, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ is willing to be betrayed, to be given into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross. We now let's remain with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Good Friday is taken from the prophet Isaiah in the 52nd and 53rd chapters. Behold, my servant shall act wisely, he shall be high and lifted up, and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred, beyond human semblance, and as far beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations, kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told they, they see, and that which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed what they heard from us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, as one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before it shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich man in his death. Although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one say, My servant, make, me, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul to death, and was numbered with the transgressors, that he bore the sin of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him, that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle reading is taken from the Epistle to the Hebrews, the fourth chapter beginning with the 14th verse. Since then, we, since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every way respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience to what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you will that your Son should bear for us the pains of the cross, that you might remove from us the power of the adversary. Help us so to remember and give thanks for our Lord's passion. We may receive forgiveness of sin and redemption from everlasting death. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join now in seeing the first stanza of Jesus by the Father now. In number 404.
When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you see? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you have given me, I lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? To join that in singing the first hand of oh, of wound, <coughs> sacred hand of wound. In number four. <laughs>
themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters, so they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken, to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is true? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Join us in the third stanza of the sacred head. <laughs>
bearing his own cross, the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross, and read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. Join in singing the fifth stanza of the sacred day. Which no one had yet been laid. 
So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Join us in the final sentence of the sacred prayer. <laughs> He was stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God. 
he was wounded for your transgressions and crushed for your iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought you peace, and with his stripes you are healed. Yes, your high priest sympathizes with you in everything that you are going through, beloved, because he has endured it all, no matter what it might be, to save you from it. His flesh has endured it, his mind has known it, his heart has felt it. He knows, beloved, he understands, and he is with you. You are not alone in any of it. He is always there, ready to listen, ready to help, ready to bear you up and carry you through it all. See your high priest crowned with thorns, serving you on the altar of the cross today, beloved, and know his sympathy for you in all things. Truly, not even Aaron in all this bejeweled full majesty was as glorious as this naked, battered man, with that precious, sympathetic, spear-pierced heart. And no golden altar can compare to the mercy seat of that rough hewn cross, for the sympathy of God numbered himself with sinners like us, the saints. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which the past will understand, with your hearts and your minds, in Christ Jesus, and the life of us. Amen. Join us in hymn number 451.
we have ordained for punishment of evil doers and for the praise of those who do well, all the powers that exist in the nations of the world, we humbly pray you graciously to regard your servants, especially your gracious majesty, Elizabeth, our Queen, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and the Parliament, the governors of this province, and all who have authority over us, and all who receive the sword as your ministers, they bear it according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray our Lord God Almighty that he would deliver the world from the sea, ward off famine, set free those in bondage, grant health to the sick, and a safe journey to all who travel. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of those who labor, may the prayers of those who in any tribulation or distress cry to you graciously come before you, that in all their necessities they may rejoice in your manifold health and comfort. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who are outside the church, that our Lord God would be pleased to deliver them from their error, call them to faith in the true and living God, and His only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and gather them into His family, the church. Almighty and everlasting God, because you seek not the death, but the life of all, hear our prayers for all who have no right knowledge of you, free them from their error, and to the glory of your name, bring them into the fellowship of your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our enemies, that God will remember them in mercy, graciously grant them such things to both needful for them and profitable for their salvation. O Almighty, everlasting God, through your Son, our little blessed Lord, you have commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, pray for those who persecute us. We therefore earnestly implore you that by your gracious visitation, all our enemies may be led to true repentance. We have the same love and we have one accord, one mind and heart with us and with your whole church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the fruits of the earth, that God would send down his blessing upon them, and graciously dispose our hearts to enjoy them according to his own good will. O Lord, Father Almighty, by your word you created, you will continue to bless and uphold all things. We pray you so to reveal to us your word, our Lord Jesus Christ. We may dwell in our hearts, and we may by your grace be made ready to receive your blessing and all the fruits of the earth. Those things that pertain to our bodily need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all things for which our Lord would have us ask, praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. That's the congregation, please rise. You have delivered up your Redeemer to be scourged, for I have redeemed you from the house of bondage. You have nailed your Savior to the cross, O my people. Holy and glory God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, leave us not to bitter death. O Lord, have mercy. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people, and wherein have I offended you? Answer me, for I have conquered all your foes, and you have given me over and delivered me to those who persecute me. For I have fed you with my word and refreshed you with living water. You have given me gall and vinegar to drink, O my people. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, allow us not to lose hope. Lord, 
Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people, and how have I offended you? Answer me. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? My people, is this how you thank your God, O my people? Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, keep us steadfast in the true faith, O Lord, have mercy. We adore you, O Lord, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For behold, by the will of your cross, joy has come into all the world. God be merciful to us and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us, and have mercy upon us. We adore you, O Lord, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For behold, by the will of your cross, joy has come into all the world. Let us pray. We implore you, O Lord, that your abundant blessing may be upon your children, who have felt the passion and death of your Son in devout remembrance, that we may receive your pardon and the gift of your comfort, may increase in faith and take hold of eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.